Hi and welcome back to Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars. I have been so excited to play this game. I've been waiting all week and finally it's that time so let's get into it and see what happens to George today. So I need to go and see Marquet at the hospital as he was the one that should have had the gem given to him but I'm thinking before I do that I'm I want to see if I can speak to Lobino, I think his name was, the the guy at the museum. Hang on, there's a guy there now, is that Lobino? I beg your pardon, are you Andre Lobino? Please, please. That's me? You yes. want my autograph? No, I was <laughs> told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay, shoot. Tell me. Oh, you have many things to tell me. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure, it was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. Right. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Mm. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope, while the crows devoured their flesh. That explains the image of the hanged man. It does. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pegram was digging. Mm -hmm. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. Pegram. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. Right. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer. Uh, July, I think. The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was. Uh, just before Bastille Day. Hmm. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Victims of what? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Just thinking aloud. Hmm. We should tell this Lobino guy what Where we know. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin. But there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the Revolution. I want to know about the manuscript. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, there are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, mm -hmm. uh, that's a tall order. Just Definitely. tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. <laughs> Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. <laughs> How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The king of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The order became known first as the Knights of the Temple mm. and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Yes. Glad to be of help, Georgie. He knows a lot. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Hmm. So their money, goods, and lands were donated to the order. Wow. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Mm. Oh, if it does, the truth has never been made public. What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained mythological status. 
like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Mm. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. I don't know about that. I, I think it's possible. Well, I definitely do trust this guy. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah, not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come around and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed mm. a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this mm. friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. Hmm. Okay, maybe I don't trust him anymore. This friend who has the manuscript? Ah, uh, we, uh, the anonymous girlfriend. She lives at 361 oh, no. Rue Jarry. Ah, I know no. it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. No, I didn't. I, I was, I wanted to check with Nicole first. Oh my God. I don't know about this guy anymore. And I just gave her, I gave her address out. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. I didn't want to give the address, but it, it, it. It made me. <laughs> Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out <laughs> of the case? Ah, uh, no! <laughs> that tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. Right. How sophisticated? A painfully <laughs> loud alarm bell. Alarm? How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein <laughs> that tripod is situated. Right. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. True. Okay, well. Thanks for your help. Bye. Okay, so, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm not really sure what to do next. Do I go to Nicole's house or do I go and speak to this Marquet guy at the hospital? I'm stuck, I don't know what to do. I might go and see Nicole first. Hi, Nico. What are you sounding so <laughs> cheaper about? I'm full of the joys of the fall. <laughs> okay. I can't <laughs> imagine why. Because Sergeant Mu has given me another lead. The guy who was supposed to collect the gem, Jacques Marquet. You found him! Mm -hmm. He's in a hospital here in Paris. I guess that was the killer's doing, to stop him meeting Pegram. Maybe. Are you going to try to talk to Marquet? What have I got to lose? Plenty. <laughs> I need to tell her about this creepy guy. Have you found out any more about the Knights Templar? Yes, I have. The guy responsible for the downfall was Philip IV, the King of France, otherwise known as Philip le Bel. Mm -hmm. Well, he is known to history as Philip I, but I doubt <laughs> if the Templars called him that. Not I'm like sure that. Andre will tell you all about him. Hmm. Well, I cannot warn her about. See you soon. Yeah. The guy. See you. <laughs> she sounded very breathless there. I think she might have some problems. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I wanted to warn her about that Lobino. He sounds creepy. Okay, well, we've at least spoken to Lobino and Nico again. And she's told me to go ahead and visit the hospital. So that's what we're going to do now. There's a new place, the Mont Poisson place, but I need to check out the hospital first, I, I think. I, I need to commit to doing one thing. There's just so many things I want to do. But we're going to go and see Marquet here at the hospital. I remember she gave me some really weird instructions on how to get to his room. Do I remember which how to get there? I don't know. I'll try. <laughs> I don't remember. As I turned the corner, 
I saw the source oh. of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. That's it the was noise. an industrial polishing machine with an odd looking guy in tow. Right. I thought that that noise was her typing. I. I wasn't in the mood for shining <laughs> floors. Hello. What's that? <laughs> I said hello. Oh, hi. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. Okay. You know what? If you start <laughs> whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. <laughs> it's a deal. Okay. Do you know a nurse called Grendel? Sure I do. Is she on duty today? Yeah. End of the corridor, <gasps> Ward J2. J2, okay. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the corridors? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. Okay. It must be a great comfort. He is. Damn. Would Mr. Shiny be your <laughs> polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. That's fantastic. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. <laughs> yes, George. He's got a name, you know. Mr. Shiny. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. Yes. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? No, I, uh... I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. <laughs> I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull through. Whatever you've got with this metal mop foot is probably a fine and noble thing. Mm -hmm. It is. Say, it's not every day <laughs> I meet someone as crazy as me. Okay. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Okay. What do you think of this, Sam? Oh, boy. What is it? A priceless gemstone found in a medieval castle in Ireland. Get me into Marquet's <gasps> ward, and it's yours. Oh, what? Oh, don't word jewelry. <laughs> if this gem was yours, you'd be able to buy a hundred Mr. He doesn't Shinies. want a hundred. Don't he be just wants silly. the one. There's only one Mr. Shiny. Exactly. <laughs> That guy's quite nice. I like him. He's not hurting anyone. There was no anyone. way I could improve on the sculpture with the janitor watching me. <laughs> Why do we want to improve on the sculpture? Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic had made me unduly suspicious. I mean, I knew it was only my imagination. But the water tasted, well, peculiar. Huh? I didn't get that. Okay. I noticed that you can take out this guy's plug. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Oh, this poor Mr. guy. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? <laughs> Why do I want to do that? What's that going to do? What is that going to do? I wasn't in the mood for... I have just enough time to... Oh. That has allowed me to do something. Hmm. Dr. <laughs> Stobart at your service. Okay, so I have now got a doctor's coat on. They're not going to believe that I'm a doctor.
what happened there? Where am I going? <laughs> this that's the nurse on the ward. Which one of these guys is Marquet? Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh hi, <gasps> is this ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Oh no. Uh, thank you, nurse. <laughs> well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed two. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, Doctor. Oh no. What am I gonna do? She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. <laughs> Thanks. Oh no. Oh no, this is not good. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Hi. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. Mm. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> and then I recover. Okay. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a <laughs> diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. No, that's not I true. I know exactly what you mean. It's oh. known in the medical <laughs> field as blinking. What? what? Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. What? But, but just think, two seconds every minute? Why? <laughs> that's almost half an hour every day. <laughs> two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. Terrible. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. <laughs> Oh, wow. Which bed is Marquet in? <laughs> He's round the corner, mm. in solitary. True. What's the matter with him? I don't know, but the men who brought him in were wearing masks and rubber gloves. Wow. Hey, you're a doctor. <laughs> how come you don't know? <laughs> we doctors don't know everything. Then how come you act like you do? Oh, shut up. Has Marquet had any <laughs> visitors? Nah, <laughs> neither have I. That's the worst thing about being in hospital. Mm. You feel like the rest of the world has abandoned you. Well, you know how it is. <laughs> Life goes on. Thanks for those comforting words. <laughs> yes, thanks a lot. Oh, well, how do I... Well, goodbye and good luck. <laughs> thanks, Doc. Well, I finished with that guy, but I need to... Go and see Marquet. This is a really nice hospital room. Very fancy, actually. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? Sure. His name is Eric Sopmarsh. What's his problem? He's delirious. He just now came out of theatre. He's recovering from major surgery. I'll have him up and about before you can say, Lazarus, <laughs> get out of your bed and walk. Oh, my goodness. George, what are you doing? Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> my name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. <laughs> Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Okay. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. <laughs> are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. <laughs> What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's hmm. simply not true. Hmm. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? Yes. You've got to have discipline in a place like this. Definitely. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? Mm -hmm. That room was mine before I was <laughs> tossed out like a common squatter. Sorry. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. <laughs> Tell me, Doctor, what's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three <laughs> months. Three months? A poor guy. See you later. Bye. Can I see Marquet now? Come on, lady. Doctor? Yes. What is it now, nurse? Number two again. He won't tell me what he wants. 
He said you'll what? only talk to a man. Do I have to? What? That guy's nuts. Doctor, I'm surprised <laughs> at you. There's no way to talk about our clients. Okay, okay, I'll see him. But I'm telling you, he's a hypochondriac. <laughs> when do I stop with this nonsense? Hello again. <laughs> What's his problem? There's nothing wrong with him. I can't talk to that well, guy. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. There was nothing wrong with that guy. He wanted nothing. Oh, yes, I need to see Marquet. Do you have any clowns on the ward? <laughs> Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. Okay. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last <gasps> three months. Oh. Well, he's not our clown. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A hmm. silly stunt involving a <laughs> unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. Right. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. Aww. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. <laughs> Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Yes. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Oh. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. Yes. That's not my concern, monsieur. How am I going to go and get into Marquet's room? There Doctor, must be a way. What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Oh, go away. I don't care about you. <laughs> oh no, I don't know how to do it. Uh oh. Can he do it properly, George? It's fine. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> no, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. <laughs> excited. I'll come back later. <laughs> excited is probably not the word. Oh, I just want to get out of this room with these awful people bothering me. Oh, doctor. Go away. What now? You didn't finish taking my blood pressure. What? Excuse me? Okay, let's try again. <sighs> I'm wondering if this is a puzzle. There's something I need to figure out how to get out of this room. You don't have the first idea what you're doing, <laughs> do you? I'll come back when you've recovered your manners. <laughs> if he calls me over again, then yes, there is something. There's something that I need to do here. You haven't fit. Yep. Will you keep quiet? You're mm. disturbing the other patients. I'll keep quiet when you've taken my blood pressure properly. I have to see Jacques Marquet first. Mm-hmm. How come he gets preferential treatment? It's because he's got money, isn't it? It's not like that. I'll come back when you've dealt with that chip on your shoulder. No, I'm not going to be able to get away from him. Something... I noticed that the nurse walks away. Yep. You haven't finished it. I got to do something different here. I'm unable to get away from him right now. The nurse does walk away. I'm thinking I might need to do something with that guy when I am walking away, when she has walked away. Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir. Nurse Grendel. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. 
Hmm. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty, you didn't know. <laughs> I... What if... What do you know about this piece of equipment? It's a device for measuring blood pressure. Yes. What if I get this See guy... Right. ...to take that guy's blood pressure, and that will shut him up? This is Dr. Hagenmeyer or something? You must be the new boy. Oh! Uh, yeah, I must be. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. <laughs> Bernie, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my man. Can I trust you to look after him? Sure. Do your own babysitting, Graham. <laughs> Who do you think rude. you are, anyhow? That's so rude. I am Felix Hagenmeyer. Yes. And. May I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, <laughs> sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. Yes, right up I there. I look on it as a privilege. No, an honor to look after your nephew, sir. Yes. He is fresh out of medical school. <laughs> it will open his eyes to see a real Dr. Ramsey job. Mm -hmm. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. Wow. Okay. All right. Come on. So long, Hagenmeyer. Come on, Benny. Come on, Benoit. You. Are you going to follow me? Are you following me? Good boy, Benny. Good boy. Now you are going to have your first hands-on experience with a blood pressure guy. <laughs> Come on. All right, so, Benny. Benny, come here. Hey, Benoit. There's no need to shout. <laughs> what do you want? You are going to do that. Here, take this pressure gauge. And you're going to take that annoying man's blood pressure. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, uh, keep it safe until I think of something. Okay, use that. Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? On that annoying guy. Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, while he's doing that, I should be able to get out of here, right? Come on, come on. Let me in. Rather you than me, pal. <gasps> I'm... Going in? Finally! Oh, whoa! Whoa! Look at this Marquet? poor guy! Yes, I am Marquet. Wow! I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. We're not here to kill you. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem. Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the Ashashim. <laughs> What's to do with the matchbook? That's Not the me. Matchbook. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You, you could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. Oh my what God. should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Who's that? Tell him that yes. I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. Yes. You have it? Not yet. It's in the museum. But it's being taken care of. I I heard a couple <laughs> of stooges with a flare. For Betty Crime. Those Would guys, that be Flap yes. And Guido, by any chance? <laughs> no, Seb. We've met. Mm -hmm. What about the Hashashin? Uh, uh, he's more likely to have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging. Of the sword. Okay. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, he 
is gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. <laughs> they have geese in Syria? <laughs> oh my god. George. As a theory uh -oh. about the location of the... Uh -oh. <sighs> That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr mm. Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Yeah. Wow. He's not in good shape, Marquet. How dare you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. <laughs> I finished with your pressure gauge. Thank you, Benny. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having oh, a no. cardiac arrest. Oh, no. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Oh, no. What is this? Are you sure he was a doctor? <gasps> oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Braille. Dr. Braille working here. <gasps> He's an imposter! Oh no, get in there, quick! The door's locked! Help me, officer! Oh my god. He's killed him. Stand back, monsieur! He's killed Marquet. <laughs> <laughs> With a gun? <laughs> what? Oh my god, he's gone out the window. <gasps> oh no. He's dead. He's dead. Marquet is dead. Wow. Wow. I found Jacques Marquet. Wow. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. Wow. He's dead. Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. Wow. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No, I don't know who he was, mm. but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my goodness, wow. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. True. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. Wow. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. <laughs> Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Mm. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. That he is so true. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse <laughs> unless they'd introduced themselves. Hmm. I think that the bogus doctor was definitely new. To Marquet, definitely. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Bosso <laughs> or Sergeant Moo? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. So many I'll let weirdos. You work it out. There's too many, too many weirdos. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's referring to Andre Lobano. So we're back at the museum. Hopefully, Lobano is still here. Yes, he is. You have left is. it very late, monsieur. Late for what? Anything? Oh. I am closing the museum soon. You wouldn't like to get locked in. I can tell you. Not in this gallery. Why not? Mm. It is haunted, monsieur. <laughs> Everything's you don't haunted. In ghosts, surely. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <gasps> Seven years ago, a lad managed to hide in here. He'd made a bet with his friends, I suppose. When I found him in the morning, he was cold as ice wow. and stiff as a body. Maybe it was a cold well, night. What was the cause of death? They said it was Ooh. a brain tumor. Wow. But on his face was a look of stark, desperate terror such as I have never seen before. Wow, okay. Scary. Yeah, definitely. But it's good because I need to... Is this the point where I hide in the sarcophagus? Forget it. I think if they're going to close up, then I need to be hiding Hi, here, I guess. Hello, Georgie. <laughs> you are a creep. Have you ever heard of the Hashashin? Why, yes. It was a radical Muslim sect whose name became synonymous with murder. 
Okay. It was formed in 11th century Persia, shortly before the Crusades. At roughly the same time as the Templars. Yes. They gave a new word to our language. Assassini. The Assassins. How did the Assassins get their name? From the legends surrounding the secrets of their initiation rites. A young man who sought to join the sect was given hashish until he drifted into dreams. He awoke to find himself in a fabulous garden with everything he could wish for. Sounds nice. The freshest water, the most delicious food, the choicest hash, and the most delectable women imaginable. Cool. Do you have the address? <laughs> I haven't finished the story. There was a price to pay for this taste of paradise. Wouldn't you just know it? Mm -hmm. The young man would wake the next day to find himself back in the real world. He was told that he'd been given a glimpse of the heaven reserved for holy martyrs. A heaven he would enjoy for eternity if he was willing to join the Hashashin. How did the assassins operate? Well, as I explained, the new recruits would be only too willing to die for the cause. They'd be instructed in the use of the dagger, poisons, and disguise. Then, the Grand Master of the sect would name an enemy of Allah. And they'd stop at nothing to eliminate that enemy. Yep. You got it. They were fearless and deadly. Yes. Does the cult of the assassin still exist? Take a look around at the world today. You tell me. Hmm. What can you tell me about Philippe Lebel? He was responsible for the extermination of the Knights Templar. Okay. I know that, but why was Philip so hot to get rid of them? Mostly because he wanted to get his hands on their treasure. Mm -hmm. He had an enormous debt and a lifelong war with England to fund. The trouble was the Templars were a highly respected holy order. If the Templars were so powerful, how did this Philippe dude wipe <laughs> them out? By underhanded dishonorable means, of course. The Pope was Clement V, a Frenchman. French, huh? Handy for Philippe. Fate had nothing to do with it. He was Philippe's puppet, planted to further his political ambitions. Philippe wanted the wealth of the Templars and used Clement to get it. So what was Philippe's plan? What happened? Sealed orders were sent out all over France, not to be opened until the appointed day. That day was Friday, July 13th. That's the origin of our superstition regarding that date. Wow, At okay. Dawn, throughout <laughs> the whole of France, the Templars were arrested. It was the biggest bust in the history of the world. What happened to the Templars after their arrest? Philippe was out for blood, so he handed the Templars over to the Inquisition. Not surprisingly, they confessed to a sensational and sordid list of blasphemies. Mm. Like what? Oh, the sort of things you read about in the gutter press. Devil worship, lewd sexual practices, <laughs> spitting on the Holy Cross, that kind of thing. Mm. Well, that must have given their lawyers some headaches. <laughs> Whether or not the accusations were true, this was not good publicity. Yes. Most of the charges were probably cooked up, <laughs> but so were the Templars, <laughs> literally. Hundreds of them were found guilty of heresy and flamed grilled at the stake. They died protesting their innocence. Hmm. But surely Philippe had no proof of his charges against the Templars. A man will admit anything under torture. The Inquisition fabricated some nonsensical demon called Baphomet and then suggested to their victims that this was what they worshipped. Mm. But they didn't have to agree. The records show a Templar coming to trial with both feet wow. burned off. Fragments of flesh and charred bone falling from the stumps. Wow. What would you not admit to, to stop such torment? Exactly. So there was no truth at all in the Baphomet accusations? Not a shred. Mm. Almost every victim described the idol differently. Right. No. Baphomet never existed outside the sick minds of the Inquisitors. Mm. So Philippe stole the Templars' riches, huh? Oh, no. They weren't stupid. The king's troops marched first on the temple in Paris, then to the Templar home port at La Rochelle. There was no trace of the treasure and the fleet of the Knights Templar had set sail. 
Hmm. I think you ought to know that the tripod is going to be stolen. Mm-hmm. The uh, Lochman tripod? No. It's true. I can give you a description of the thieves. Before the supposed event has taken place? I heard them planning the raid. They're wasting their time. The tripod is protected by a state-of-the-art mm. alarm system. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> I thought I was going to take the tripod. Why don't you loan the tripod to me for safekeeping? <laughs> because I'd never see it again. Well, don't you trust me? It's not a question of trust, George. That tripod is hundreds of years old and extremely fragile. Yeah. I get your point. That is true. Okay. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Right, so we've learned quite a bit about the Templars and also this tripod. I wonder if it'll get stolen tonight when they lock up. Oh, I know that I have to hide. I just know I have to hide in that sarcophagus at some point. But when do I hide in there? Now, I'm not really sure what to do. Can I open the sarcophagus? Don't even think of climbing in there, monsieur. <laughs> You'll be suffocated. Hmm. I always wondered how it felt to be a mummy. <laughs> I need to maybe get him looking another way. What's that? He needs to look a different way. The oh. rod turned smoothly and the window above me opened. Okay. Nice. I wonder if I need to do something with that. Oh, he then. Oh, oh, oh. He closes it. Let's wait for him to walk away, maybe. And then, yes, he's going to walk away. What I need to do, this is kind of like going to be like the goat puzzle. I need to open the window and then I need to very quickly get into the sarcophagus, right? Don't open it. Remember oh. the burning cattle. <laughs> I need to wait for him to look away then. Okay. Now he's going to go over there. And while he's busy closing that, get in. Yes. Okay. Now what do I do? I just sit here. Okay. I'll just sit. I'll just wait. <laughs> it is closing time, Monsieur Lobino. Already, there just aren't enough hours in the day. More than <laughs> enough for me. I can't wait to get home and put my feet up. Eh bien, see you tomorrow. Good night, monsieur. Go, go, go. Yes. Yes, I did it. Ooh. Oh my god, what was that? That's that guy. That's like, that's Guido, right? <laughs> and there's Flap. Oh boy. Oh. George, hey, what are you Guido, doing? Look at this! Quit fooling around, you moron! <laughs> Get your ass over here and bring that flashlight! Oh. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Oh, I need to do something. <gasps> what the? Oh no. Who's there? Let's get out of here. I did the right thing. Oh. <laughs> 
Did I do the right thing? What? <laughs> Who's that? What's happened to George? <laughs> what happened to George? And when I woke up, I was at the police station. <laughs> Luckily, I managed to persuade Rosso I was innocent. Poor George. What oh, no. a mess. I bungled the whole thing. Oh, no. I don't think so. You made a pretty good job of distracting those two crooks. <laughs> yeah, but the killer got away with the tripod. I know. No, he didn't. He's not the only one who can dress up in <gasps> costume. That you was mean... Nico. Oh. It was you who stole the tripod? <laughs> oh, hell, Nico. I could have been shot. <laughs> Those dogs are more likely to shit their own feet. <laughs> I just wish you'd told me your plans. We're supposed to be in this together. Mm -hmm. And how come you dressed up like a pantomime cat? <laughs> Don't suck, Georgie, please. Oh, rats. <laughs> and don't call me Georgie. <laughs> oh, I really thought you'd be pleased. After all, we've got the tripod. Yes, I know. Aren't you going to try putting the gem on the tripod? I guess so. <laughs> she did look good in her cat costume. Nothing okay. happened. No, yeah. The nothing's gem happened. fits perfectly, but what does that prove? Hmm. It needs to be in the right position or the right place. Wow. We've Maybe got the, tripod. the tripod has to be in a certain location. Yes, There's that's right. There's nothing on the manuscript to indicate where, though, is there? Oh, by the way, I had a visit from Andre Lobino. Did you? Oh, yeah. I hope you didn't mind me giving him your address. Not at all. It was lovely to see him again. He was over mm. the moon when I showed him the manuscript. It's not mm. often he gets that excited. He made a sketch of the knight's crest to take back to the museum. I believe he's identified the family who bear that crest. I sure hope so. Okay. Labino explained who the Hashashin were. Yeah? The cult of the assassins. Oh, Boy! <laughs> what do you think the purpose of this tripod is? On the manuscript, the gem is shown mounted on top of it. Yes. So, we risked a criminal charge to steal a display <laughs> stand? Don't ask me. Maybe it's intended to mm -hmm. hold the gem in a specific position. Definitely. I know that. I have to go. Already? You only just arrived. Time and tide wait for no man. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Well, that was fantastic. And we've come such a long way now. We've actually managed to get the tripod, even though that was Nico dressed up as a pantomime cat. But I forgive her because it all worked out in the end. I had this feeling all along I'd have to hide in that sarcophagus. So I'm really thrilled that... <laughs> I actually had to do that and I don't know how I managed to work out to push that tower thing over but it it, it worked and I'm so happy but that poor Marquet guy this is one big mystery I really want to get to the bottom of this I had such a fun time in this episode and we've come so far I'm really happy Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this. I am personally loving it. I can't wait to play more. Have a most wonderful day and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.